No, you can't. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to kind of get all my thoughts together beforehand, so I'm basically going to read. Um, I don't really write a lot of poetry, but there are times when inspiration strikes and words flow from my heart like water from a spring. This first poem rose up in me after a worship service that um, I had participated in. I literally wrote this by speaking into my phone while driving home. Someone at church had told me that I did a good job, but it didn't really mean anything to me because there isn't any depth to the connection that I have with this person. This is in response to the church culture where we're pressured to be perfect, and it's called I'm fine. It's not okay to not be okay. Is it ever okay to not be okay, where perfection is expected as if it was the only selection, continually faking smiles, hiding all the while who I am underneath, wondering when someone will see that I'm not who I present myself to be? Is it ever okay to not be okay? I would love to be fully known instead of feeling all alone, but ask me how I'm doing, and every time I'll casually respond with, I'm fine, knowing that it's a calculated reply, a complete and utter lie, but I still use it every day because it's not okay to not be okay. Who I am underneath is the most important thing about the face in the mirror looking back at me. I wish it would reflect something more than the circumspect. Hope, perhaps, or even love, or something heavenly from above. I acknowledge that God still works wonders, but right now I'm still under whatever it is I'm dealing with. I would love to let you in to help me bear this burden, but during service we're always hurrying, not allowing space for each person's face to truly reveal the man behind the curtain that we've so carefully concealed, because it's not okay to not be okay. I'm sick of being another stained glass masquerade. Can't you see that it's impossible for me to go from victory to victory when I'm the one to blame for my troubles and my shame, for the pain and the strife that I had in my life and deal with on a daily basis? But when I look at everyone's faces, I can't let them see that I'm not really free because it's not okay to not be okay. When you tell me I did great, can't you see a difference it doesn't make because the only type of connection is casual communication? There's no deeper relations because we only deal in faces and not the deeper longings of the heart. And so I will continue showing up, wondering when I will catch a break and finally come across the things for which my heart aches. But in the meantime, when I encounter the parade, expect me to show up as a stained glass masquerade because it's not okay to not be okay. This next poem was written after an event similar to this one. I was aware of a situation involving someone who'd been hurt by religion, and while going into the church where the event would take place, the idea floated across my mind, someone should write a poem about that. I dismissed it at the time, but as I was leaving, perhaps there was something inspirational about the parking lot? Um, the thought again occurred to me, so I went with it and wrote this when I got home. One, for the person who was hurt, two, for the one who taught them, and three, for everyone else exposed to the same teaching. This is called Lies and Plans. To the pupil, when will you realize that all these truths they're telling you don't add up because the math can't be found in the source, they're not sound? To the professor, the people you're duping are living in a stupor and need to be shook away or their souls they might bake in an atmosphere that doesn't allow for human messiness. There's just too much stress and pressure to be perfect and have it all together or for God to come find you every time you're in a bind. What do you say to the ones who continue in pain, who do their best over circumstances trying to reign, attempting to wield forces out of their control, clutching at things on which they don't have a hold because they're part of something bigger than them? You can't keep this wild one boxed up in your pen. Life is not a formula, never has been, never will be. Yeah, I just said never twice, but that's because these people are being led around like three blind mice. They don't run at all, they just stumble and fall like a blind man in the dark after you rearranged his furniture that he had so carefully memorized, like a scripture that was misquoted to him a hundred times. To the people. Yeah, scripture's a bedrock, and you can stand on it firm, but there are some lessons in life that you will still have to learn. They don't teach these in any school, except the school of hard knocks. It's just the right jewel. A diamond in the rough, the only one with the guts to give you the right stuff and not erode your trust, and the one who can give without ever taking who loves from the heart without ever faking. 
So poke, prod, and prune every spirit and look at the fruit, not just of the professors, but from his pupils too. Find who you want to be like and follow that man, but only as he follows Christ. That is the plan.